It's a Tuesday edition of Insta Chat with the Journalist, and today my guest is a DJ slash producer. His name is J Moscow or J Moscow, however way you you know you wanna say it. And yeah, you know he just dropped a new single called Finally, featuring Pearl, and uh, it's a very dope tune. J Moscow is a guy who's been in the game. You know he started in the game in 2009. That's when he started like learning how to produce and all that, and ever since he's he's made you know quite a couple of moves. Um, he has a residency in Ibiza. He's had residencies in you know New York, and so forth. So he's like a international jet setter type of DJ slash producer. And uh, I just thought that you know let me just have a conversation with this guy because. He dropped finally last week Friday and uh, yeah he's pushing the song um, you know he's dropped a couple of EPs and today we're just gonna talk to him about his career and what drives him and you know what are his plans for the dance culture movement which is why we're here today so for those who may not know the journalist DJ.com is a platform whereby you know we document like dance culture in South Africa. We document dance culture in South Africa and we talk to everybody in the dance culture space, whether it's Ama Piano, whether it's Gong, whether it's um, Deep House, doesn't matter, you know, as long as it's house music, this platform is here to, you know, document the culture. And as we all know, South Africa right now is like the capital of house music. And yeah, we've got all flavors. So today my guest is Jay Moscow. And yeah, let me just add him on so that we can and get to understand Jay Moscow better and get to understand his journey as a producer slash DJ. And he'll tell us about his new release, uh, a track called Finally, featuring him. He'll also tell us about, you know, his uh, collaborations and uh, his networking system because he he networks uh, with like international people you know he doesn't limit himself to South Africa only you know he's worked with guys from New York he's worked with guys from Spain so you know it's a, it's a guy that really 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 understands how the game works you know and you know 11 years deep in the industry he's he, he's the man you know um, so I see the connection is just taking a bit long to add him on, excuse me. So, okay, let me just try and add him again. Yeah, guys, sorry. In my home language, which is Setswana, we say, Matata Asetechinik, you know, which loosely means... <laughs> experiencing technical issues hey, oh, yo, no, no. good now i can see you i can see you i can hear you how are you brother i'm good in yourself i know i'm chilling man i'm good man you know i'm feeling blessed to be yeah yeah to, you know and, oh, yeah. and he, your name man jay Mosco. jay Mosco. yeah what yeah. inspired that name um you know to be to be honest with you I've always been someone that um, thinks like very globally. So when I created that name, I was just thinking about something, a name that just won't box me or put me in and under the umbrella, you know, just something that will just also allow my name to be, um, to be able to pronounce it, you know, regardless of where you're from, what religion, you know, so something along those lines. And I, and I had to keep the J there because I mean, it's that that's my names, you know. Mm. And you know, talking about like thinking global, you know, you've been messing with people from like outside of SA, outside of Africa. You have yeah. connections in, in New York. Tell us about that. Um <laughs> it's crazy, it's crazy. It's it's like as soon as like I started like doing the whole production thing, um the first people that sort of picked up the momentum were, were outside. You know, um, it was it first started with uh, Blue Black Music from from New York. So they're the first ones that were like, you know, man, this this sound 
the sound is very good, we would really love to um, to distribute it because um, there's also like a serious house culture that side. And what I, what I love about their culture is that it's not just the youth, you know. You, you find that um, there's old people, like, you know, people in their 40s, people in their 50s, running successful labels and distributing, like, they're really, really serious about the culture. So when they heard the, 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 the music, they were just like, no, man, we, we have to distribute this, this side. So that's how first things uh, sort of picked up. Mm. It was through, yeah, through Blue Black Music. Yeah, and, and, and also it didn't stop there. I think you, you did it for three years, right? And then now you're doing stuff uh, in Ibiza as well, you know. How, how did that come about? Yeah, so, okay, let me basically explain um, the whole journey of how, like, it picked up. Yeah, um, yeah. From, the, from the first release with, uh, with Blue Black, right, um, in New York, um, that sort of, like, got traction. So as soon as that got traction... Um, I got the opportunity to do podcast shows on on Philly Nights Radio in Philadelphia, you know. Mm. So it's it's like they they're very serious about like doing podcast shows, podcast mixes, um, because it was also around about the same time that Lars Berenroth had like deeper shades and everything, you know. Mm. So they also had like their own podcast shows happening that side. So I got um, an invitation to be a, to do to do residency on that show. So, like, literally every week I'm on that show, I'm doing mixes, I'm doing mixes. And then from there on, <laughs> the mixes were doing very well. So that sort of um, got the attention from, from Europe. It got the attention from Europe. And that's when um, Ibiza Live Radio got interested. And they were like, yo, we'd also like you to come do um, podcast shows on our platforms. And yeah, that's you know that's that's pretty much how the the how to how we got to like the Ibiza thing. Look, man, you know, and I'm jumping straight into it because you know you you mentioned that you know you've always had like an international type of view of your career and you know where you wanna go. And I know right now a lot of like South African guys, you know, they wanna be international, right? Yeah, so. Yeah. Locally, you know, how has the reception been in the home ground of your music? <laughs> it's actually, it's interesting because um, I, I feel like there's, there's a huge um, barrier, like or in terms of what people are consuming, like locally and internationally, whereby you find yourself um, having to change your sound. Like sometimes in order for you to appeal to, appeal to the outside audience, you have to like sort of teach your sound. That's why um, I see someone like like Shimza right now. Like Shimza is very much like he doesn't want to do like um, the typical South African music. I see he's switched it up now because he's trying to get that sort of audience from outside. So, I mean, from SA, I guess people didn't sort of really understand, you know, what's going on, you know. And I think it, it has happened with a lot of people, not just me. I think there's a lot of people that are doing well outside of SA, but um, in in South Africa, they sort of the the sound is, is they can't really grasp it, you know. So, so so that's also part of the reason why right now, um, but the, also the release of finally, that's why like sort of finally sounds the way it sounds like. It's because I'm right now. I feel like I'm I'm, I'm at a point where I'm trying to incorporate. Um, South Africans into this whole thing, you know. So I mean, they they shouldn't. They they. It's a, I think they mustn't get left behind, you know. So I have to like think for them, you know, and co compile that music according to that. Yo, man, that's dope. Shout out to Candice. Uh, she's showing you a lot of love. <laughs> it's very out. interesting. It's very interesting that you know you say you know with finally you're trying to kind of like you know cater for the market and even the title it says itself it says finally you like it's like you're always like Ish, finally okay guys here's one for you but what was the inspiration behind that song you know with Paul? bro yo that song Ish, that song that song is very special you know um i think for me the last few months have just been special as well you know because um i've, I've once i took the decision to start like um 
focusing on SA and everything. Um, that's when that's around about the same time I got um, attention from 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 DJ Kanyani. Um, that that's when we started. You know, he he took me under like his wing, sort of a thing. Um, and then that's when you know he started. I started basically learning from him because he's someone also that has been doing this for a very long time. So um, when I when I when I created finally, I was in a mental state where like things were pre- like were going like pretty smooth for me. You know, I was learning a lot, and I just wanted to do. I, 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 I'm just at a place right now where I just want to give people um, timeless music. You know. Um, for example, for example, I don't know, like if you remember the Soul Candy sessions, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember those. Yeah. Well, Soul Candy sessions. If you played Soul Candy sessions right now, we would still jam because it's it's timeless music. It music it's music that like never expires or anything. So when I created a song like Finally, like I just wanted to create something whereby um, even five years from now, like five years from now. 10 years from now people would listen to that and be like this was a beautiful time you know sort of a thing so that that was the main inspiration behind it and i knew in order to do that i have to get like um specific vocalists you know vocalists that sound a specific way and can sing a specific way and uh shout out to pearl you know shout out to pearl um i actually like like when we did when we recorded finally <laughs> that was actually the the second studio session i've had with her you know wow. so, uh, yeah like literally like literally like the way we've been working me and her it's amazing because the first studio session we had we created we recorded three hit songs and then i told her yo after lockdown i want us to record this other one so it was only the second time like we we, <laughs> we were like hanging out and Every time we we together, we just keep creating these classic songs, you know, and it's 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 amazing. It's really amazing. Yeah, man, and you know, like you're creating classic music, you know, learning from the likes of Ganyani. How is yeah. that relationship like? You know, like because I mean, he's been he's one of the guys that has been very consistent with like dropping hit songs for like the past ten, fifteen years. And uh, what 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 are some of the most valuable lessons that you've learned from Kanyan? Yo, like you know, from the get go, like from the get go, you know, like I was like I was really picking up things, like, um, like first of all, like just um, it's like like first of all, from little things like your tempo, um, how the song should go the arranging of the chorus you know like even though it's some things that you you did obviously know yourself but when you listen to someone like him speak you know and and you know it's it's coming from a trusted uh person because i mean he has obviously hits on <laughs> you know he, he has hits and he has plaques to prove it you know so i think um just from the get go like just everything he just said you know like you know get out, like just make your chorus strong you know do this do that do shit like this do that like it's it has it has really improved like uh myself like a lot it's it's it's, it's yes yeah, it's, it's done it's done amazing things yeah man you know finally is what almost a week old now um, yeah 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 you know it's 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 november it's a crazy time everybody's dropping um, yeah. you know when you project and look at, at at the future you know of of your releases how is it looking like um okay like because you know i also covered 19 sort of um delayed a few things but um now the the, the future is looking very well um so right now um i'm it's exclusive news right here on the I'm on the genesis um i'm about to go work on the on the visuals you know of the song and Yo. and this and this is it's it's going to be special like we're going to make it special you know um everybody's going to resonate with it so that's what i'm um, i'm i'm, I'm going to work on and that will be ready like uh, before the year ends so um i think people would probably start seeing it like early um 2021 and then after that um 
I have a full body of work coming out because there's so much amazing music that I've been um, working on and everything. And we're going to release it next year. Like probably just after the video drops, we might just leak the, the, the full body of work. And I think by then um, people will be in the right um, frame of mind and everything to consume the music. Yeah, man. And you know what I like about you is that you have like uh, an incredible team around you. Um, <laughs> I think three different people have approached me, you know, talking about you. Uh, <laughs> even when I'm out having a drink, I'm like, and you know, someone's like, yo, man, hey, you got to check out Jay Moscow, you know. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, no. I, was, I was speaking to him, you know, and uh, I think that's very really important. Uh, you know, a team that pushes you, that believes yeah. in you. Yeah. So, you know, I believe you're in safe hands, my brother. And uh, yeah, man, yeah. I believe that, you know, um, you, you're really, really going to take the, the music culture, you know, to that yeah. next level. But yeah, you know, second yeah. last question, like, how do you choose who to work with? Um, you know, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, um, I, I like for me hype is, is I don't look, really look at hype, you know, um, because I mean it's, you 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 can have have all the hype in the world, um, but you can still not be a good writer or a good singer. So I think for me, I always come from a perspective of making sure the music sound as good as possible, you know. So regardless of whether you are popular in the country or you know, or what, for me, it doesn't matter. As long as, like, you're very, very good, um, then that's really how I how I approach it. And I think right now in South Africa, there's something special happening right now. I think um, with the emergence of, uh, obviously, Elaine um, last year, it's encouraging a lot of, it's encouraging a lot of vocalists and a lot of singers and whatnot to start coming out and start working on music and start working on projects, which is, which is a very good thing because those are the sort of people, you know, that we, we we're looking for, you know, we're looking for people that are very serious about the craft. You know, we're not looking for chances. We don't, we don't, we don't want chance takers, someone whom um, they trying to do it, like maybe for the hype or something, you know, like maybe you, you work on a song, but when it's time to promote it and to market it, then all of a sudden they've decided they've quit music and then they've went to do YouTube or something, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> no, no chances, you know, <laughs> like yeah. it has to be like, it really, it really has to be something that you are passionate about. I feel like that's where um, I, I like, I, I have to look at things like that, you know, how serious are you about your craft and how dedicated are you? And if those things are in place, then it's going to make everything easier. It's going to make everything easier for us so that's definitely how i approach it when i look into like vocalists and everything okay um what do you think which genre i know and right now my piano is rocking we all know that, but which 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 house sub genre do you think is gonna rock south african for the next two years when you when you just project oh um you know to be honest with you man to be honest with you, I, I know this is a conversation that a lot of people are, are having right now. Um, but I, I really feel like, um, I feel like, I really feel like Tip Tech is next, actually. Like the sound of um, what Cairo's doing, what um, Dawson, what Dawson is doing. Mm. Dawson from Pink Town. Like, like, like that music that sort of like is being released through stay true sounds. I think that sort of music is, is slowly becoming commercialized, it's slowly becoming radio music and it's slowly people are, are are getting more warmed to it. And I feel like once that whole thing clicks into place, then that's probably gonna be like the sound. Because that sound is already like huge um internationally. You know, it's like internationally that sound is huge. And that's actually and sometimes when you say you're from Africa they're expecting you to, 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 to be doing like music like that. You know, like when you say I'm from Africa or something, they expect you, okay, you're going to come through with, you know, that sort of vibe. But I definitely feel like that's where it's going. 
Mm. I know, man. Cool. I, I like asking that question because, you know, I'm doing research. So I want to I wanna know what the guys on the ground are doing, you know? <laughs> so yeah. that's why I'm asking that. Look, man, thank you so much for your time, bro. Is there anything yeah, that I missed that you might want to say? Um, look, uh, first of all, like, yo, shout out to you, man. Uh, what you're doing for the culture is really amazing, you know? Um, I, I think, I think it's important for us to have these conversations and, and, and keep, and keep, and keep these, um, chats alive, you know? Um, so that, because, I mean, there's a lot of also like young uh, upcoming dudes trying to find their place, you know? And I think the more they just hear the um, different producers and different DJs speak about their stories, the more they can get inspired and the more than they can sure. be, be serious about chasing the dream. Um, but overall now, nah, um, I think we've, we've pretty much covered everything. I think, I think that exclusive, <laughs> those, yeah. those exclusive news that I announced, I think that, that's the most like important thing. Like, I feel like that is where it's really going to rock it. Thank you so much for the exclusives, bro. You know, um, the visuals coming soon, 2021. Yo. And yeah, Yo. man, you know what? Um, if if you're not done shooting the visuals, bro, I would love to come do behind the scenes, um, yeah. you know, coverage and all that. You know, I'm here for the culture. I'm here to support yeah, yeah. you guys. So yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, shout out to you, brother. Keep creating dope music. We here. We are rooting for you. We are supporting you. And yo, man, shout out. Thank you so much, my brother. I'll let you know. I'll definitely let you know. As soon as um, everything is confirmed, I'll just give you a call. All right. I know. Danko. Danko. That's what they say. Danko. Thank you. Thank you.